Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. Uh, it's me, Ramon Carrasco, if you didn't know that already. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about an artist who um, a fan of, and I discovered him late in my artistic you know, prowess, but it's Rene Magritte. And Rene Magritte was um, a surrealist, and surrealism is a Art movie that emerged in the 1920s, and, and we all know Salvador Dali was a prominent figure in this surrealist movement, and he's actually considered to be one of the last masterful or masterly, no masterful or masterly. Masters. Like he's considered to be the last masterful painter, right? Is that correct, right? Masterful painter. <laughs> anyway, he's considered to be one of the, the best. The, the best, the last masters, the last of the painters who were really skilled at what they did. So anyway. He was a surrealist painter just like Dali. He was born in 1898 and he died at the age of 68 from pancreatic cancer in 1967. 68 is not really that old. Now that I'm getting closer to 40, like I feel like, wow, 60s is not that old. So I'm like, he died at 60. I'm like, gosh, he still had like 25 years he could have lived. What gives you pancreatic cancer? I don't know, but I don't want it. But anyway, he was from Belgium, so he was a Belgian surrealist, and he studied in uh, Brussels. So today we're going to do one of his, uh, well, we're going to be inspired by one of his paintings, which is the, he did a lot of men in suits he painted, uh, and this one is the one with the apple in front of his face, so we're going to do that. And we're going to start by drawing the apple. So apples are always kind of curved at the bottom. And then... Kind of circular, but anyway, like his apple in his painting is actually like a perfect circle. But I opted to make it a little bit more apple shape. But if this is too hard for you, or you just don't really care, then you just draw the circle. I mean, it is surrealism after all. So, like I said, he um, went to school in Brussels, and like lots of artists, he became a commercial artist after the fact. So then you do the apple stem and then we're gonna do three leaves. So you leaves, not leaves. So you're gonna do three stems. And from there you do the leaves. So yeah, commercial art, which commercial art is like back then since um, technology wasn't as advanced like people who did advertising or commercials, like they had people who actually had to draw and do everything. Now everything's computer generated, so I don't feel like commercial art is that big of a thing anymore. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry. Bless you. <laughs> so there we have his apple, and that will be directly in front of his face, and now we're gonna do his face. You know, I feel like I'm a lot like Marguerite, how, you ask? How am I like Magritte? Well, you're going to do a U for his face. Well, Mag Mag Magritte was in the military, and I, like Magritte, was also in the military. I did four years in the active army. I was a 25 Fox, which has a lot to do with communication, and then I did three years in the National Guard. Wow. So yeah, Magritte and I are like this. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, um, Magritte had a very traumatic childhood. Um, we're going to draw his hat now, so we're going to do a parallel, not parallel, a perpendicular line to this. I know, but it's like a horizontal line. You just make sure you don't put it where the apple is, or the stem of the leaf. So when he was, I think, 12 years old or something like that, his mother committed suicide. She threw herself in the river. Like, she suffered from depression, and I guess one day she's like, you know what, I'm done with this, and she just, like, ran towards the river, threw herself in it, and then she, I mean, she drowned. And he saw all of this. We're going to add another line on, directly on top of it. Then it's going to be the hat bill. So, yeah, due to the suicide of his mother, he became really secluded and kind of just to himself, and that's how he started drawing and writing and things like that. And then you're going to bring this around to make If I'm going too fast, just pause me or rewatch me, I don't mind. But yeah, because of his mother's suicide, he had a very 
secluded childhood. And his mother actually committed suicide in 1912, and he wasn't born in 1998. I think he was 12. Do the math. I'm horrible at math. But anyway, do an upside down U for the top of the hat. And there we have his head. And you don't have to put any features because it's covered by the apple. Maybe we can put in some ears. Give him an earring. No, I don't think it wore an earring. But anyway, he in his early 20s, he was very inspired by Pablo Picasso. And I mean, do you blame him? He was not inspired by Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso is like one of my absolute favorites. And now we're doing his like neck and then his shoulders. But at the, I think at that moment, Pablo Picasso was in his Cuba stage. So, I mean, you can look up his work, what he was influenced by. And that was like in the 20s, which was at the start of surrealism. So he was, he came a little bit after the 20s to surrealism. And this guy was married. His wife's name was Georgette, Georgette Burge. And they married in 1922. And you're just going to bring this lens all the way down. But I don't think they had any children. But anyway, the cool thing about this guy is like, I wouldn't say that he was a father of pop art, but a lot of pop artists were influenced by this guy, especially Andy Warhol, because he would take like just ordinary objects and place them in unusual settings. Like there was a contrast between the object and what was going on. It was a lot of everyday imagery, which is what pop art is about, kind of like Andy Warhol's uh, Hamilton Kent, which you should watch my video on my channel about him. So yeah, a lot of pop artists were influenced by him, and even though his ideas were a little bit surrealist, they kind of like merged with what pop art was about to become. And pop art started in the 1950s uh, in Great Britain, and he died in 67, so it, it, they, they kind of overlapped a little bit, and then it came to the US shortly after that. So we're gonna do another line here for his shirt, and then and then uh, his tie, and then two lines for his coat, and then you bring this up to make uh, his collar, and you keep bringing this down to make the tie, or the knot of the tie, whatever that's called, and just bring this down. Like I said, he was a commercial artist, and Andy Warhol was a commercial artist as well. As well. So this line, I'm gonna bring it down. This coat. Whoa, this is running out. Maybe like a greater than sign, and that's gonna be the. I don't even know what that's called in the suit jacket. What is that called? It's not the collar, is it? Suit. So but this little part right here that brings over I don't know, we'll just do that and you're gonna bring this all the way down so you have two lines and then his buttons and you do the same thing on the other side the greater than sign you connect this sign to there this to here add some sleeves The, the original pain didn't have a pocket, but there's just too much negative space here, so I'm going to add a pocket. If you want, you can add a lapel. If you don't know what a lapel is, it's one of these little handkerchiefs that go in here. Do people still wear those? But anyway, and then back here there's a fence, a brick fence. So add some horizontal lines. And another line up here, and what this means, kind of take the line but uh, slant a little bit. And you do the same thing on the other side.
So in the original painting, he's behind this brick wall and it's the ocean and then in the sky, but there's no real clear distinction as to where one ends and the other begins. So you could write in a put in the line and divide the sky from the ocean or just not. And then there's a lot of clouds. It's almost like a stormy sky. So I'm gonna just add some clouds. And do one on the other side. I mean we're not copying what he did. We're kind of just merely being inspired by his work. And there you have this man. It's funny because um, I follow this person on Instagram and they did a photo shoot where they were tr they were purposely trying to recreate this but it was the photograph was the guy in a suit and he was throwing an apple in the air and the apple I mean I guess this was what this would be this apple was thrown up in the air and then the image was taken in except in the painting he has a red tie and the guy didn't but anyway a lot of people are inspired by his work and like I said a lot of people believe he started the whole movie in pop art, which I'm a big fan of. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, tell me what you think, and what I should be drawing next. And till next time. Oh, and you should look at Salvador's work. It's really, 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 really good. Adios y bye.